The first awesome upgrade you need to know about is in ChatGPT. Kind of. Well, this is what ChatGPT looks like normally, but there is another place where you can access the power of its AI, and that is in the chat playground. This is platform.openai.com forward slash playground. Easy. And then we've got this bit, the chat bit. Okay, down this side, we've got chat, real-time assistance, TTS, and also other sort of things. But this is what we're interested in in the chat panel. We've got this little button here, and what it does is it allows you to create perfect prompts. It is a generator for creating prompts that are just so powerful, so detailed, that they can be used in any other large language model and even to create your own GPTs. So here we go. Let's have a look. If we click here and we say, like, uh, what would you like the model to do? So this is where you need to think about the common things that you do as a researcher or in your life where you want to use AI and you say, what do I want to do? So I want a GPT that is like a supervisor. One really simple prompt that you would normally put into like a normal chat GPT interface you can put here. So give me feedback on a peer reviewed paper to make it better. Super simple, lacks all of the normal kind of like rules that you normally have for prompting. But this is where the magic happens. Click create and we get generate gets nice little animation. Oh, look at that. We like that. And then you get system instructions. So system instructions are essentially what you give the AI tool. And here we've got provide constructive criticism on a peer reviewed paper to enhance its quality and look at all of the different steps it's got. So steps, summary, understanding, strengths, areas for improvement, clarity, data and methods, argument support, actionable suggestions, output format. It's got all of these things that you can actually then put into your, the large language model of your choice, whether or not it's perplexity, whether or not it's Claude, whether or not it's chat GPT, whether or not it's Bing, you can take these and really add some <laughs> to any large language model. Now, one thing I like to do with this is take this and put it in something like text blaze. That way you get access to all of these prompts just by a, a simple kind of short code, which is fantastic. So this chat playground also allows you to create your own assistance. So here is where you can create assistance. I've been playing about with this a little bit, but essentially, you know, you go up here and you say create a new assistant and then you can put your system instructions right there. So if we go back to chat, oh, it's disappeared. That's sad. But you can take what was generated here and put it into your assistant. Save that assistant. So you can have different assistants for writing, for feedback, for generating ideas. Just really, really powerful. Go check out this playground and play about because I think you're going to love what's behind the scenes. Oh, hello. What's this? of ChatGPT. The second awesome upgrade you should know about is in Perplexity. I love Perplexity because it allows you to do academic searching. It gives loads of references. Absolutely love it. But it's got a little bit more useful for academics. This is how. So when you sign into Perplexity, this is what it looks like. But now we've got these buttons down here. Oh, what does this one mean? Spaces? Oh, maybe Andy's going to talk about that. You are right. Spaces. Create a space. Now, a space can be a little individual space where you do a particular task. For example, it may be paper writing. It may be reviewing a paper. It may be editing your work. Whatever you do, you can create a space for it. It's kind of like creating your own little helper that does a very specific task. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So create a space. I click here and then we give it a title. So I want it to be my um, supervisor. So then you create a description, which is optional, but this is a professor to give me feedback on a paper. Okay, great. And then we can change the AI model if you've got pro, but you don't necessarily need it. And then you've got custom instructions. And this is where you could put all of the prompts you've just generated in chat GPT as a system instructions. All right, so in here we've got a grumpy and sad twice divorced professor to give me feedback on my work. Brilliant. Okay, and then we click continue. And then you can see we've got now this supervisor chat space. You can upload files. So if there's anything you want this uh, particular space to have access to, you can put it there. So for example, you could put examples of your writing and say, write like me. You could also provide it with uh, success successful grant applications and then say these are successful grant applications essentially make my grant more like these. All of these things are super powerful and each individual space can be customized for what you want it to do. So here um, I've got a grumpy supervisor and we can start sort of like getting feedback as if our supervisor is in the room. 
with their long ear hair. Not all of them had long ear hair. I'm starting to get that now. I have to pluck it before every video. Gross. Anyway, <laughs> that's not the point. Check out perplexity.ai and check out Spaces to see how it can help you. The third awesome update that you need to know about is in Claude. In Claude, we've now got a few experimental features that I think are awesome for researchers. So if you don't see this button here, or this little purple box here where you actually sort of go and add them. So if we click this, you can see we end up with this feature preview and we've got analysis and we've got LaTeX rendering. Absolutely brilliant if you're using LaTeX to write your thesis or your papers like I did during my PhD and postdocs. And then you turn things on and off down here. So that's off, we can turn that on. LaTeX rendering, we can turn that one on. And then you get this little thing and it says, look, there's experimental features there, great. You can see if you don't have that, purple box or you don't have that little tab all you need to do is go down here to feature preview and click on that and you get that same box so with these activated every new chat will have access to these new features so I put something in down here this is one I did before recording and I put in a CSV file of some um, data that I wanted it to look at now here's the thing it doesn't like Excel documents. For some reason it said no, I don't like it. So I had to convert my Excel document to a CSV. A little bit uh, annoying that you have to do that for all of your different stuff, but nonetheless that's what I did. Um, and so I put it up and I said, could you help me visualize this data? And then as you can see it did all, did all of this. It took some analysis. Um, it did its own sort of like coding. You can expand and copy that into your own um, coding platform if you want to. And then we've also got all of this. So it, so it plotted a bar chart and box plots and it also gave me a summary of what it's created. So this was really great because this uh, document wasn't actually formatted in a very nice way at all. Maybe I can show you that. So it was just a load of data put into a nice table format um, and it had all sorts of other different types of things. It had, you know, all of the uh, different variations and tabs. So it was quite a lot for it to deal with really. So here we go. We click on this and the one thing I love is that it pops up to the side. The user interface is lovely in Claude. They've always done so well. Now the problem is, is even though we get the right numbers down here, efficiency, ITO was 2.47 and silver nanowire single wall carbon nanotubes was 1.93 it didn't reflect in this um bar chart at all but the one thing i like about this um is that this drop down menu means you can select different bar charts just by clicking on here now it didn't pick up the ito stuff unfortunately i don't know what went wrong there but importantly the right numbers are created here they're just not plotted the right way so i'm sure with a bit of prompting and a little bit of backwards and forwards you can get this to do what you want but it's really nice to see claude go this way the analysis the code interpreter all of these things that are being put into different tools different large language models means these are getting more and more powerful and suitable for research um, and the great thing is you could take something like this put it into your um PowerPoint presentation for supervisor meetings for any sort of like symposia that you're presenting in. It's a great way to create tables and uh, absolutely love all of the things that uh, Claude is doing in that space at the moment. So go check it out and try it for your research. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about how ChatGPT Canvas can change your life for the better. I think you'll love it.